What's going on everybody? So today I wanted to take some time to talk about Madster's pretty unique approach defensively in the Madden challenge where he was calling a lot of quarter quarter half style coverages. Over 60% of his play calls were either cover 6 or cover 9. Now if you guys don't know what quarter quarter half is, it's basically where half the field plays quarters coverage or cover 4 and then the other half plays Tampa 2. So it's one, one side is covered by a deep half safety and then the other side is covered by usually it's a, a deep safety in a deep quarter zone and then that cornerback on that side is also dropping into a deep quarter zone just like your standard cover 4 shell. So you get Tampa 2 plus cover 4, 4 plus 2 equals 6 and that's why it's called cover 6. Now this is a popular concept especially in like college where the hash marks are really wide. A lot of teams will play you know Tampa 2 to the short side of the field and then the quarters covers to the wide side so that if they were playing normal Tampa 2 that one safety on the wide side of the field would have a lot of ground to cover so to make up for that they go quarter quarter half it's also used in the NFL sometimes to kind of you know throw a Pro Bowl receiver like a Julio Jones or AJ Green kind of off his mark on that Tampa 2 side the roll the, the Tampa 2 to whatever side he's playing on so that that cornerback who's playing the underneath flat zone can go ahead and get really physical with him throw him off his route and just kind of try and throw him off his game and know that he can't get beat deep because he has the Tampa 2 shell behind him now you might look at the stats on the screen and say well it doesn't look like it was very effective now those yards per carry 8.38 9.17 are obviously not very good however they're slightly skewed in the sense that that cover six especially Spoto broke off an 83 yard halfback draw for a touchdown in their matchup and without that one run without the 83 yard run uh, that yards per carry would drop from 8.38 to 3.4 so about five yards per carry that one run added on so other than that one play it was really effective at shutting down the run same thing with the cover nine show too he ran that a lot against joel and obviously joel loves running that hp stretch out of the single back wide trips he broke off two long runs because that run is just very very tough to stop consistently for an entire game he broke off two touchdown runs of 72 and 34 yards without those two runs those yards per carries would dip all the way down to 3.69 so for the vast majority other than the huge plays huge chunk plays the cover six and the cover nine were actually very adequate at stopping the run as you're going to see here so this first example is going to be from Master's matchup against Joel it's actually going to be the second play on offense from Joel and this is going to be the ideal scenario that you want to see from Masters defense so he's in that cover nine show two quarter quarter half so on the back side you're going to have two deep quarter zones from the cornerback and the free safety on the strong side the strong safety is going to be playing that deep half and this is important that Matster rolls the Tampa 2 coverage to the trip side of this formation because it allows this cornerback on the outside who's in that flat zone to play very aggressively in the run game and basically try and shoot down and make a play in the backfield if Matt didn't roll the Tampa 2 to the trip side or even if he was in a standard cover 4 what this cornerback would do is basically he would backpedal a little bit and then just like engage with Stefan Diggs and so Matt wouldn't have anybody actively trying to shoot into the backfield to disrupt that play so it's the best case scenario on the right side is that that cornerback gets through now on the back side you also have this free safety in the deep quarter zone and he's going to do a great job of playing very aggressively in the run game coming downhill in case Joel goes to something like the halfback dive out of this formation so as you're going to see right here, Joel goes with a stretch, the cornerback shoots through, lays a big hit, gets a fumble, and fortunately for Joel, Todd Gurley ends up recovering the ball in his own backfield, but that's basically what you're going to want to see from that quarter-quarter half style run defense against that halfback stretch. Now the second example is going to be from Masters matchup against Spoto, actually going to be Spoto's first play on offense and Masters going to roll with the cover six this time so basically he's going to have quarter quarter on the right side of the field and then the left side of the field uh, that free safety is going to be in the Tampa 2 style defense now Spoto tries to attack this on offense with a bunch trail setup and I think this style of defense actually matches up well against bunch trail mainly because that outside cornerback on the right dropping back in that deep quarter zone does a great job of covering up this corner route which is what a lot of people want to hit on this play and then you're going to see the standard setup hitch route from Landry and then the backside post route from Keenan Allen now right here you're gonna see snap of the ball from Spoto and initially the right side of the field is just blanketed right the hitch routes covered uh, you have it looks like master manned up a guy on the hitch route you have this deep quarter zone is dropping back 
eyes on the quarterback really muddying up that area of the field where people want to throw that corner route you also have this defender right here so the corner routes blanketed in the hitch route is well covered now on the back side you're going to have that deep post route opening up for spoto and the thing with this style of defense is because of the fact that you have this deep defender right there in that quarter zone you don't have as much room to throw this deep post route as you would against a standard cover two because of the fact that he's playing that kind of middle right center quarter zone instead of just the entire right half of the field so Spoto's going to be forced to throw this post route a little earlier than you would like and it actually makes it a very contested throw ends up catching the ball anyway for a 26 yard gain but you can see that was actually good recognition by Spoto knowing where to go with the football also good recognition by him throwing it early knowing that he had to do that otherwise it would run into that quarter zone but you can see how that quarter quarter half style of coverage can throw people off guard and can match up pretty well against some of the popular plays this year now this third and final example is going to come from his matchup against prodigy prodigy is going to go with a tight end angle setup out of the deuce close formation to the wide side of the field and matt's going to go with the cover six now what i want you to focus on in this play is tyler eifert now matt rolls the Tampa 2 coverage to the left side, to the wide side of the field, but he does a great job of recognizing where he needs to be coverage-wise. So he covers underneath, knows he needs to be on that drag route because of the fact he has that cloud flat on the left side of the field who's sinking back. He's right behind this B receiver icon, and he's kind of bracketing that deep corner route that a lot of people try and hit along with that deep safety who's in the shadows right here. Now the tight end angle route over the middle is running right into that zone, so Prodigy does not want to throw that. And like I said, the main person I want you to focus on here is Tyler Eifert. Now Eifert streaking down the middle of the field. Against a normal Tampa 2 scenario, this is probably a walk-in touchdown. But because Matt goes with the quarter-quarter half coverage here, the strong safety who's in this deep quarter zone, kind of on the right center of the field, is in the area and really deters Prodigy from wanting to make that read. If this were a standard Tampa 2, this strong safety would be probably a few yards out, maybe towards the numbers, and that would be an easy walk-in touchdown read for Prodigy to Tyler Eifert. But because he's in the area, he's not able to make that read. Matt does a great job, actually. Prodigy notices the scrambling lane. As you see, Matt right there on the left peels off of the drag, sees Prodigy scrambling, comes up with a big user hit stick, gets the fumble recovery, and that's a huge swing in the game. So that's just kind of a scenario of it's a coverage that you don't see very often, and it can definitely throw people off and make your reads muddy because it's just something you don't have many reps against. So I just thought it was very interesting that Matt came out in the Madden Challenge with that unique style of defense. I thought he actually competed very well despite going 0-3. His games were pretty close. If we see him again, I wouldn't be surprised if he picked up a win or two and definitely moved on to the group stages in his next tournament. Now, if you guys are interested in expanding on this scheme and hearing even more of the thought process behind it, definitely stay tuned to the Madden Daily website along with the Madden Daily YouTube channel as Lights and Matt are actually planning on making a video in which they do just that. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely leave a comment and let me know if there are any specific schemes or plays that you would like for me to break down from the Madden Challenge Tournament. And until next time guys, take it easy.